Hey folks, we're back with Kaiserreich today. Kaiserreich had a recent big update, especially for Poland. So that is what we'll play today. New focus tree, new mechanics, and I think this is a new leader. I, I don't remember. I haven't played Poland in Kaiserreich, but let's find out. So they're still where I remember them being. Now let's see if they suck or are actually quite good. We'll leave Iron Man mode on and turn historical off because they want me to. Little note here. I apologize if I sound a little weird. I'm sick, but the YouTube grind must continue. Continue. All right, so Poland, nice army, two tanks. I like that. Rest. I don't know if I like the rest of these, but we'll make use of them. I don't remember Heinz Guderian being Polish. I think this will do for initial setup. Templates look all right, so this is actually pretty good to start with. Not great, but functional. Let's train a couple more infantry over the course of the next couple of years because we will not be going to war soon. At least I hope not. We are on civilian economy, so I'll just start by building a couple of infrastructure. I'll make guns artillery, support equipment, I'll need trains, and I'll need trucks. And if I have any factories left, let's just make a couple more tanks. The basics for research, as you do. And then focuses. This is the new focus tree for Poland. So we have a bit of a political slash economic branch over on the left. Military branch that even spreads out depending on what politics you've chosen. Pretty big branch. And a small naval branch, in case you ever get to the sea. And then down here is the advanced politics slash economic branch once you make it to 1938 and the election has happened. For now, let's just start with the one focus we can do. Speaking of election, the battlefield for Poland in the early years will not be war, but it will be politics, which is just war with fewer guns. Our goal will be to keep the monarchy in power. I am a monarchist at heart, so August, you get to stick around. So we'll try to keep the monarchy in power, which means the monarchy and nationalists combined need to have over 50% majority in parliament. The nationalists are still supporting the king's government. If that ever changes, we'll even need the monarchy to have over 50% support on its own, which is going to be difficult. So it's going to cost us a lot of political power up here. Then we have to spend political power down here to fix the economy, because apparently we don't even control 20% of our own economy. We have to fix that. There will be more events down here that we can click, spend political power, and make Poland a little less terrible. So let's get going. Also, a whole lot of text here. Pause the video if you want to read these. So uh, yeah, and here's the next one, and here's the next one. All right, there we go. And that was it. So I'm thinking I'll focus on the Polish economy and the stability of the kingdom. I don't want to go to war with myself. Oh, and Kornilov has taken Moscow. All right, as you'd expect. Appointment of the General Inspector. Oh, and Black Monday and Afghanistan. Right, so we have to choose who becomes our chief of army. Berbeki, not my kind of thing. Sosankowski, not my kind of thing either. Guderian, the brilliant visionary. He's going to be expensive, very expensive, but I think the army gain this early on is going to be worth it. The XP gain is going to be huge. You better earn your keep, Guderian. And with that done, we can start on the economic slash politics branch. I'm thinking politics first. What we do here decides what we can do here. I want his majesty's cabinet and do I want a constitution? What is a constitution really but a piece of paper that gets in the way of getting things done? All right, so I've looked at this for 15 minutes. I've decided we will go with his majesty's cabinet and depending on how we can manage the elections, we'll just roll with what we get. Either the Geheimrat and then just be a good loyal puppet of Germany, I guess, or entrenched constitutionalism, and we'll try to get our Krakow, etc., Galicia and Lodomeria back. Let it be so. Now I have to choose here to form the Königstreue or strengthen the interpartisan circle. What do I want out of this? Let's strengthen the interpartisan circle. I like that monarchy popularity. We'll also get a bunch of these events, which will require us to balance the various factions. Do we strengthen the socialists or the nationalists? In our case, the nationalists are still on our side, so... I I guess we're back in them. So I haven't really played this all that much, but the way this feels is the first half of the game. Until the Second Weltkrieg starts, you're pressing buttons trying to keep Poland from collapsing in on itself. Now, I have heard that you can get civil wars or various different outcomes depending on how you handle this politics stuff, but it's not your usual hearts of iron. 
until the Weltkrieg starts. So it gives you something to do. I just don't know if this is something you want to do. I'm having fun, but I don't know how much fun this is going to be to watch. Yeah, as the political situation deteriorates, uh, so does my stability. I don't think we'll have a whole lot of stability this run. Ah, there goes Finland. Great. And we can now investigate several parts of our country. Let's start by cleaning up the officer corps. So we have to do all of these and then compose a final report just to make sure nobody's plotting against us. And we found our first problem. We can pick the most severe option, which will do the greatest harm to our enemies, but also come with the downside. We will, for instance, lose Kazimir Sosnkowski. I think that is this guy, a pretty good general that gets yeeted. Or we uh, pick more careful options. However, those careful options might come back to bite us the ass later. And I think the Republicans are a threat, so I'm going to persuade this man to go away. I have more generals. I can make use of. So that is probably going to be the theme here. Purging our army and everything else of the enemy. So we will do our best to keep this whole thing from ruining Poland, while at the same time actually hurting our enemies as much as possible. Now, do I safeguard liberties or reign in parliament? It's usually a good idea to keep parliament under a strong and very shiny boot. So let's do that. Now it is the question of just how firmly under the boot we want to place parliament. Either we can backtrack and adhere to the constitution, which is for suckers. We can simply dismiss parliament outright, but it's expensive and I don't know how this is going to bite me in the ass. It might really hurt. Or we can just stack the courts and settle it that way. Now, I don't know which option is best. If you know, let me know in the comments, but I'm going to be careful here and just stack the courts. Strikes against the government. I am Belgian. Your strikes mean nothing to me. Ah, as I'm trying to purge the church, it turns out the church is full of traitors. Do I really want to poke the fires all that much? The top option is the sensible one. We burn it all to the ground because they are traitors, but ah, but I'm not a coward either. I'll just be careful. Well, guys, we have no stability, no political power, but we're still in control of parliament. This is what politics feels like. You're never really winning. We just made the other guys lose. The Polish government does not negotiate with terrorists. God, stability's in the gutter. Everyone is against me. The great peasant strike, but we will never submit. Excellent. Crushed violently. So that's that problem solved. And our heavy-handed investigations are paying off. We have decimated the underground with one broad stroke. Hundreds of the king's enemies have been swept away. We get more PP, more stability. Uh, overall, a good change. Our country is almost stable. Well, not really, but you know. Yay, the Jews like me. Okay, so this is very useful. I probably need to up my conscription laws as well, but I also want, I'm gonna move towards early mobilization. Start getting my economy to do some actual work first. Okay, so we have our elections and it's bad news. The nationalists won these elections. I, I thought I was doing well, but yeah, nationalist support is very high. As a result, they are the dominant factor in our coalition, which isn't good because I want monarchists in charge, not nationalists. I do feel a bit scummy for that. I feel bad as well. I thought it was doing really well here. And now we have anti-German agitation. Oh no, I lost relief of command. No, ah. So I had the relief of command thing here, which makes it very cheap to hire military advisors. I never got to use it. I could have stacked my military so well with that. Ah, I screwed up. I screwed up. Yeah, there goes Middle Africa. After a whole lot of doing focuses and politicking around, I can finally end the anti-German agitation. So that is one less disaster to worry about. The threat of a coup has passed. The nationalists are dealt with. Also, I'm really wasting my time in Hungary. The AI doesn't seem very willing to attack, but uh, eh, well, we'll keep things going along as we can. Starting to get my country into some sort of fighting shape. Well, define fighting, I suppose, but... Oh, great. The Russians have decided to invade the Reichspakt because they decided to go to war with our Azerbaijan, who is a part of our faction. Our faction is nowhere near ready to fight the Russians, and the French are also justifying. So we're about to have a very, very very bad day. Let's get all these troops out. At least Poland can contribute one full army. Well, we'll send out 
the boys, and hopefully the boys can do some good in this region. I'll just make it my goal to be as much of a thorn in the side of my enemies as I can while I am still little old Poland. We'll get bigger, we'll get stronger as time progresses, but for now, we can be little more than a nuisance to the enemy. I think uh, our faction will be best served by Polish military genius devoting itself to the weakest parts of Russia. I'm gonna take away railways, supply hubs, create encirclements, do all the damage I can. Oh my god, the entire western flank is collapsing. My attention may be required elsewhere. If only I didn't have to waste all of my time and political power trying to fix my country. I could have had a functional military. A functional military that could contribute to the military campaigns. But no, here I am, stuck with garbage. So far, we're doing actually fairly well on the eastern flank. It's just the west has me very concerned and Germany is spread very thin. We're also losing in Italy, so yeah, not, not going very well here. Austria intervenes in the Second Weltkrieg. Austria is now in the Reichspakt. Faction looking a lot beefier. Maybe this will bring us the strength we need to hold off, at least in the west. I think I'm doing all right in the east. We've, we've had some major victories against the Russians here and we're about to have another one if I can take Vitebsk. We're now at war with the Belgrade Pact as well. So we're at war with everybody and this ain't looking too good. Not looking very spicy at all. I'm actually afraid to look at the Western Front because this is completely collapsing. Like, total collapse. German army's gone. I don't know where they are. Probably all hanging around right here. Poland has this in hand, Germany. I don't need you here. I am surrounded by incompetence. I am absolutely surrounded by incompetence and it's annoying. Encirclements, encirclements. I'm killing Russians, but Germans are losing faster than I can kill Russians. <laughs> I need help. Also out of oil. Without oil, there's not much I can do here. At least my tanks are still killing some of the enemy units. Germany has been consumed by Batavian Commune and the French. Austria's really not done all that much useful, but they are at least shitting on Serbia, so there is that. What are we doing? Everything we can and it's not enough. The Russians managed to land so many troops here and I just don't have the oil to run my tanks. Without oil, my armored core is useless and Guderian can't make it. Well, I have taken Petrograd. I should stabilize supply in the region. I'm hoping to punch through to Riga, but again, no oil, no maneuverability, no maneuverability. My tanks become useless. Useless husks of steel. Well, if I can just punch through Riga, I can cut this entire Russian expeditionary force off. Supply here is improving though. It is improving. Oh yes, 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 yes. We might be able to kill the Russians here if we can take Riga. Ah. They have an army in Riga. I think there's enough Germans here to hold the line that they don't need me. Supply is going to improve. I'm going to devote my forces to containing this Russian landing. My economy is in the gutter. <laughs> I just, I just want to win. Oh, Munich has fallen. All right, that's it. Uh, I think we're done. I, th I think we've lost. I see no way to dislodge the Russians here. I don't have the... Uh, well, maybe if I move my troops here, but realistically, there's there's nothing I can do here. I am going to pull my Polish divisions to the defense of whatever's left of Germany. I don't think we can win. The East seems okay. It's, it's the West. The West has me very concerned. Polish forces are now in position to try and hold the region. Other than holding the region, there is not much I can do here, mostly because I also have no more manpower, which means I'll need to go to extensive next. I need war economy. I also need a military. I need more political power and I need time. Oh, uh, what's this? German Labor Corporation. I can go up to extensive for free or on the cheap, but it is going to cost me political power. Or I can do this, which means I lose political, I lose the crudel pop, I lose stability, and the Germans get some good stuff. No, every man is needed for the front lines. I need manpower. At least I'll get it this way. Eastern Front is actually doing very, very well. As long as we don't lose Petrograd, I think we can. Uh, uh, push the Russians back a fair bit. And the influx of Polish legionnaires has managed to stem the tide on the Western Front. So we are holding. And now we mop up the Russian naval invasion with Riga being fully surrounded. Oh, that's going to be very helpful. Oh, great, great.
Greece is now also in the war. The war has been brought to the doorstep of Berlin, but the Polish army is striking back. So we're taking territory back, pushing some of these syndicalists out. Hopefully we'll be able to establish stronger defensive lines and uh, see from there. Austria is getting its teeth kicked in as usual. These naval invasions are a nightmare to deal with. I don't know how the AI still hasn't figured out that it needs to guard its ports. Greece has been knocked out, but now we have a stupid Albania there. All in all, not as horrific as I first thought. We use the armor to push the enemy back through this river line. So Berlin is no longer threatened. The line is stable and the tanks are doing the Lord's work. They clean up pretty well wherever they go and the industry is slowly recovering. So we're no longer as helpless as we were before. We're still in a very bad state here, mostly in the Austrian territories now. And well, let's just ignore the fact that half of Germany is occupied, but things are looking up depending on your definition of up. <sighs> I move my armored core around like a fireman trying to put out fires and so far it's going well, but then the AI manages to lose Ireland. Ireland, all it has to do is not get naval invaded and it's fine and e it can't even manage that. Lost Dublin. On the bright side, we have managed to pretty much cut off this naval invasion. So all these French troops are going to die if the Austrians ever mount a successful counterattack. And I am pretty confident I'll be able to retake Poland or whatever that port is. I just said that things were going well and the Russians land troops. Why is the German Navy not responding? I don't know. But now I have to rush my army back north. Well, my army, my tanks back north, clean that up. I got slightly distracted, as you can tell by the amount Oh God, by the amount of troops. What is Germany even doing? So massive naval invasion behind my lines. Uh, tanks are all the way over in Russia, cleaning up another German disaster. So I may be screwed here. I don't know if I can get my boys home in time. I am sad. Still, even the Polish infantry is better than whatever trash these guys are able to field apparently. So we are, I just hope nobody ends up dying. Oh, look at that. Polish armor has done all of the work. So we've liberated pretty much the entire our Austrian coastline and now I think it's time we strike back at the German part of the front and we'll try to take as much as we can again key victory points railway hubs that sort of stuff and we've been able to force a breach there's a massive gap in the enemy lines so we're gonna rush everything we can get here we need to weaken the enemy while we can what I find ironic is that Germany's being liberated step by step and it's Polish units doing it feels good though feels good to finally starting to turn this around. I've encircled the front. Germany is being put back on the map by Polish hands. We're getting things done. A little patience and perseverance is turning out uh, into a is turning into a very big payday. Get these annoying, annoying syndicalists gone. I'll be very glad. Well, I have a very strong feeling that I've broken the syndicalist lines. I've just gone through southern Germany. If I can keep up the pressure, my small but elite force should be able to encircle the north here by pushing to the Rhine and then it's just a matter of cutting the enemy apart bit by bit. And as expected, the moment I stop micromanaging absolutely everything about the defense of Germany, the whole thing starts crashing down. The enemy has managed to push back out, all the way back out. So there is a very distinct feeling of hopelessness here as I am just unable to really make an impact because I don't <laughs> have enough troops. I think we've finally cracked the outer shell of the Netherlands or the Dutch commune and we're gonna try and knock it right over with our tanks if we can get through on time. We're gonna do all the damage we can possibly do. And there goes the Batavian commune. Okay that makes things equally complicated. I'm gonna redirect the Polish army. If I can get the Polish army to take up position on this segment of the front and I then use Use my tanks to knock out Belgium. Yes, yes, I see opportunities here. <laughs> the Polish army is really pulling a number on the Entente now. No, not the Entente. The, uh, what are they called again? The Syndicalists. All right, Brazil is in the Reichspact. I think Belgium is about to fall over. It should be. Oh yeah, Belgium is about to fall over. And with that done, ooh, so close to a massive encirclement. Ah, so close. Okay, if I can get my tanks to assist in a breakthrough in Luxembourg, I can break whatever's left of these lines. Oh, yes, 
technically all of this, all of that in the center there, all of that is technically encircled now. All I need to do is make sure the door stays open. Redeploy the infantry to do nothing to ensure that that door stays open. Ooh, that is the biggest strategic victory I've had this entire campaign. And now I just need to roll them up with my tanks and we'll have this done. Oh, look at that. Rounded them all up and they can now die. And then I can use my tanks somewhere else because either we can now knock out the French entirely, I think. We can assist in Italy. I doubt I want to do that. Or we can... Yeah, we're going to need to bail out the Eastern Front, aren't we? Polish tanks are just outside of Paris and it will be the Polish army who captures the jewel of the French Republic or the syndicalists, whatever. The fall of Paris. <laughs> if I can drive my tanks to the border with Switzerland, I have another very very funny encirclement ahead of me and it's gonna work it actually worked I cannot believe this keeps working and with that we'll knock out the Maginot or whatever it passes for the Maginot in this timeline and we start cutting 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 away at the enemy I think we've earned our keep here we've more than earned our share of the spoils and so die oops so die the last syndicalist forces in Germany, and I think we've made quite the impression. And there goes the Commune of France. Gone, gone, gone. That is one disgusting nation wiped off the face of the earth. Probably should follow up and push into Italy with the infantry. I'll use the armor to deal what damage I can to the Italians next. And I think I've run through my focus tree as well. The path of least resistance has been taken, so all right, more focuses, I guess. Oh, Commune of France has capitulated and I actually have war score. Now, what do I do with this war score? I could make things a little cleaner and start giving things to the, the other French, the French that are losing. I do wonder how disgusting this is gonna look. Oh, game's lagging, lagging hard. Oh, they gave everything back to the French Republic. Oh, that's nice of them, I suppose. Now look, the Germans have managed to land troops and none of them <laughs> have guns. If I could, I'd send troops over, but I'm busy dealing with Italy. And Polish infantry is handily marching into Spain as well. And I think we've just crushed the Italians by taking children. Uh, yep, there go the Italians. Ah, do I want to help knock? Yeah. I think I want to risk sending my tanks over and dealing with... Oh yeah, I definitely want to go help out there. I'm not able to assist my allies because I do not have convoys. I need four and I have three. Oh well, at least we still have our tanks that can do really dumb things. I'm going to single-handedly wipe out the uh, syndicalists. And there it goes. The Spanish, more or less. Oh, this is this is utterly disgusting. Finally, shipping Polish armor across the sea, and soon we will decide the fate of the Third International once and for all. And that's it. That's the last city the Union of Britain controls, I think. Who else is left that needs to die? Nobody. So that faction is gone, and we can focus all of our attention on the Russians next. The Russians will also soon perish. Oh, big peace deal. Big peace deal coming. And there's nothing I can realistically do in this peace deal, which really annoys me. I can take land, there's just no point to taking it. I can't even take ships because I don't have a port. Maybe I'll, I'll try and take Belgium then, my home country. Oh, game's lagging. Yeah, Poland took something. Well, that ends us with a pretty disgusting world map. Italy is definitely not looking great. Neither is France or Spain and all <laughs> There's now two Poles on the map. All Poland got was Belgium. Yay! <laughs> oh, this sucks so much. We are handily wiping the floor with whatever's left of the Russian army now. So we've taken Saritsyn. We're casually marching into Finland as well. This won't be too long before we're done. I think this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. I am going to... <laughs> Just cut off everything the Russians have in the Caucasus using five tanks. And I am going to drive these boys straight to Baku. Oh, I have so many tanks now. And they're all so good. Oh, Guderian. Guderian, my Guderian. The things we've done for Poland. And Poland has pushed past the Urals. And I think with that, Russia is on its deathbed. And this campaign can finally be ended. Yeah, Russia is almost dead. We've lost almost 90,000 of our boys. And we've killed killed almost a million Russians. I'd say the odds are in our favor. Look at the disgusting destruction these tanks are <laughs> wrecking on the, on the Russians. Look at the boys go. 
But I think that's the peace deal. There we go. Come on. Computer is really lagging now. Oh, it's done. It is done. Best thing about this entire peace deal, I didn't get anything out of it. The Belarusians got bigger. The Baltic state got bigger. Austria got bigger. And I, the one who carried this entire damn campaign, got nothing. I am so disappointed. If anyone knows how I could have made Poland great again, how to get out from the German thumb, or how to get my Polish land in the region back, I would be very happy to know. But even if none of that went our way, I, I still think I did good. The Polish army saved this campaign. A lot of hard fighting, a lot of glorious fighting. Hans Guderian really came in clutch here and saved Poland and the Reichspakt. I think we can end it on a win. Maybe I can take some Galicia and Lodomeria back from the Austrians if they decide to fight the Germans, but I really don't want to keep playing. It's 1942 and my focus tree is done. Anyway, I, I really like this new update to Kaiserreich. The game runs a lot smoother. I really had fun playing this. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you'll enjoy watching this next video as well. See ya.